wrestling hey, buddies want to be your buddies. Hey, buddy. Buddy. No matter where in the world you're joining us from, we welcome you to the Wrestling and Padres Slamcast. We are full of information this week, full of fun, full of so many good things. We're sweating. That's how excited we are. We're burning calories while sitting down. That's how intense this episode's going to be. Thank you for all the support over the last couple of weeks of us, uh, you know, going independent. And we have some more information uh, coming up very soon about that. But first things first, we are at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. And this is a very special episode. We might be under siege. We're looking at all the doors and windows to see who might bust in this place and try to knock us off our pedestal. So Steven Seagal! It might be him! He'll come in whispering. That's all he does anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm at Jay Quasto, Johnny LaQuasto here with you. The man who is not only co-hosting the show, but also engineering, which is such an exciting endeavor. You've seen him in the brand new feature film, Dave Made a Maze, as well as the YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show. Follow him everywhere at Scott Narver. You know he's Scotty Narver. Man, we got so many men in here. I think I got meningitis. Oh, no. That's not the way you get meningitis. But. No? No, not quite. It's a brain thing. Hmm. All right. I don't get it. That's You don't have to get it. We, All right. Yeah, fair enough. We'll move on. Uh, so, well, speaking of men, <laughs> he's sitting in between us. He led me into it. What do you want me to say? He is a professional wrestler of 16 Uh-oh, he's years. Leaving. He's leaving. He's the host of the Trusty Sidekick Podcast. You see him all the time on Collider videos and the Schmodown. And he's a friend of the show. He's a favorite of the show. Follow him everywhere at Mr. J. Washington. He is Mr. J. Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Dig it, brother. How's I'm it here in this sweat box with yeah. two other grown men, and it's going to get really awkward. Well, in look, when we said we were going rogue, we <laughs> meant it. We are in an underground bunker right now. Somehow we're making this work. This is no air conditioning. No. Ooh, yeah. Well, There's one right there. And it's I not- have to set it low. <laughs> So that way, you know, it's, it's still not doing anything. Kind of like we do. We set the bar low, and then we try to over deliver. We don't right. set the bar. <laughs> we are the bar. Man, I'm glad to be back. Uh, hopefully, no one here has meningitis or the mumps. Uh, I think I know who patient zero is for that. Anyway, man, I think it's JoJo. That's, That's will you stop? We don't have to call out names. I don't know. I think everybody. Knows. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty. Yeah. It you're could right. Be Roman. <laughs> That'd be weird. That would he's, be weird. He's a top guy. Everybody wants to hang out, ride in the car, <laughs> sip his soda, you so know, what, all that stuff. So why the Usos not sick? <laughs> well, because they know they got a good thing going. <laughs> they're like, and they're getting respect from the crowd. They're like, and they're, they're, on the, they're on the other brands. The other bra- true. So, true. Mm-hmm. Very true. How about that? Okay. Uh, off days. Do they have off days that sync up? Nope. I don't know. I don't think those brands that have off days, they like overlap on each other. Everybody's like, mm-hmm. just work, just work. Well, I hear, work, 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 work. <laughs> I hear it's no longer going to be Monday Night Raw. It's going to be Monday Night Sterilized. Oh, for God's God sake. Every, everything out there. Everybody coming to the ring with Lysol cans. <laughs> It's just under siege. Everybody with Lysol cans and baby wipes and <laughs> alcohol wipes on the turnbuckles. <laughs> you got the refs. Refs not putting no gloves anymore. They pulling out uh, Purell hands. I was gonna say hands. brand new, yeah. brand new sponsor Purell. There, Purell. there will never be blood in WWE <laughs> ever <laughs> again. Don't you bleed? God damn it! Don't you bleed? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, what the under siege thing? Number one. Before we get into everything else, I. I thought it was great because the the word the phrase was really reiterated so many times because it's a movie from the '90s that you know very well. So it's exactly, I'm waiting for Seagal to show up. Like, what's going on right now? Like, just I'm a flying. Russian citizen. Yeah, he's flying in from Russia. Like, <laughs> you guys want me to book Putin? I'll book him. You're waiting for Kurt Angle to come to SmackDown and go dark territory or. Out for justice. That's my favorite Seagal movie, not going to lie. What about your exit wounds? <laughs> Ooh, with DM, DMX. Uh, DMX. Yes. And we can Wait, up that's DMX a blown too. out butthole is what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Braun's not careful. He yells like that. He's going to get that. Wait, wasn't, uh, wasn't Cradle to the Grave the Steven Seagal DMX project? N- Oh, Ex- man. No. Ex- Credit to the Grave was, was DMX. Was DMX, but it was Mark DeCascos. 
It was Mark DeCascos as that one, and Jet Li. Okay, that I, was Cradle to the Grave. What is which which DMX film had the Ain't No Sunshine? That's Cradle to the Grave. That's Cradle to the Grave. Okay, because I know all three films in that trilogy. There's Exit Wounds, Cradle to the Grave, and Romeo Must Die. Only darkness it's every day. day. That's when you saw Dragon trying to act, and you was like, you know what? Hey. You know what? You would do good in somebody's Law and Order series, and that's it. But Dragon instead went to Game of Thrones because they love dragons. That's not that drag. That's Drogon. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'm gonna go. This is gonna be one of those episodes. Oh, man. it's already one of those. Ep- hey, when we're sweating, it gets more fun. That's all there is to it. Well, I got an extra shirt in my bag. <laughs> right? You and I have to drive to a show after this. I have no other shirts. I'm just I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna be riding in Johnny Laquasto's small car. <laughs> some, you smell like you want to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> my, you smell like feelings. My car that just hit two hundred thousand miles. Let's pray that AC works. <sighs> Fuck. See what happens. <laughs> There's a Walgreens nearby, guys. You can get some oh, ice. Get those baby wipes and ice. Cream. <laughs> Clean yourself up on the road, Johnny. Uh, all right. So, let's get cracking here. We already talked about Under Siege. Oh, by the way, if you're in Phoenix, Arizona, this Saturday, uh, Championship Wrestling from Arizona, we have a really big event at the Empire Event Center. Alberto Apatron will be in the main event against Killer Kevin Cross. We're also having an eight-man tournament to determine the first Arizona heavyweight champion in, like, a couple of decades. So, it's at the Empire Event Center, uh, Championship Wrestling from Arizona. If you want to go, if you're in Phoenix, I really strongly recommend going. Tickets are very, uh, very affordable. So hit me up on social media, and uh, you can come see us. Those are the best shows. A new champion guaranteed. New champion guaranteed. That's exciting. And guaranteed. I don't even know who's in the damn tournament yet. Are you in it? Hell no. I'll be there calling. That's foolish. You should be in it. You should get some boots. Um, <laughs> get you some boots from hot spots and a pair, of, a pair of pleather pants. So essentially, my opponent can have a first round buy. Is that what you're saying? Listen, you never know what may happen. You might pull an upset and go into the second round and get your brains kicked in. Probably. <laughs> it's entirely possible. Uh, so, yeah, Under Siege, guys. Let's just, I mean, look, we also had TLC. There's a whole number of different directions we can go. Let's just kind of round robin it. What did you think, Scotty, when you saw the Under Siege on Raw? Um, I enjoyed the fact that SmackDown was strong right from the get-go. Because that is always the show that gets the short end. It's whooped. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when you have guys leading the charge that are like Mojo Rawley and Zach Ryder, wow. you're like, ah, you know, they might get taken out right away. But New Day was there and doing cool stuff. And I, I really like the presentation of it. I like them infiltrating and finding groups of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They find Titus Worldwide. They find um, some of the cruiserweights, and then they come across the group of gals, and then they're like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? They separate like the other gals. gals going through, yeah. I thought it was just really smart TV. Like, and don't really- forget, Gable attacking Double J, Jason Jordan. Well, we've always known it was coming, and but nobody talks about it. This nobody was weird. It. I mean, I guess it, I it, see it. it. It's supposed, I mean, what better way to set it up? That, I mean, now Chad Gable has his new partner, Sheldon Benjamin, who I'm waiting on Sheldon to super kick him, to be quite honest. It looks like <laughs> the it's coming. The spin kick. The spin, spin kick's kick, way better. It looks like it's coming, though, sooner or later. Mm-hmm. At one point, because, you know, Chad Gable's all, I loved you. I was you as a kid. You you came to one of my wrestling camps, and Sheldon Benjamin was like, I had gold hair, and it slapped right. the hell out of him. But <laughs> I think that's being set up for those two. And, again, why not Survivor Series, the way they're building up this entire show, mm. with it being Raw versus SmackDown Live? Jason Jason Jordan represents Raw. Chad Gable represents SmackDown Live. Now, granted, it's like, well, what do you do with Sheldon Benjamin? You go get. What do you do with Sheldon Benjamin? You go get his mama. You know, you find. Oh Thea no, Vidal. all of them? No, you just find Thea Vidal. Yeah, oh, and that's a just, lot. Oh, okay. I love you, Thea. Bring, <laughs> you bring back Thea Vidal to Sheldon Benjamin's mama because sure. we're not supposed to know that was Thea Vidal. And, oh, it was. Uh, it was pretty <laughs> obvious. It was. It was. Well, if you're a comic fan from back then, you know, yeah. she had her own sitcom. She I mean, sure she's did. well known enough to me. I used to watch it. I used to watch it because that's when we got her. introduced to Brandy. But Rodney's place is where oh, I used yeah. to watch it. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. But I think you're gonna do that with those two. So I mean, who knows? But that could be that, or they just was like, "Yo, just just jump him, and we'll figure out something later." Because right now we got Jason Jordan beefing with Elias. Makes mm. sense to me, though. He left. Jason Jordan left. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't do. You know, in storyline, he didn't try and get Chad Gable to come along to Raw 2. He it doesn't matter who your dad is. He didn't get drafted or anything. Right. The draft didn't split them up because if the draft mm-hmm. splits up teams, they understand. Yeah. But it was just like, 
He's like, yo, I got a rich dad. I'm out. But my, my, yeah. my daddy's the GM. I'm about to help. Like, you don't want to be Raw Tag Team Champions? <laughs> we could do this. He's like, hey, man, you going to handle your business over there. Don't, you, you stay over there. True. <laughs> you stay there and keep that hair, okay? I'm going to go over here and get these lime green biker shorts. <laughs> I would love to see Gable keep attacking him repeatedly over and over again. In the same single? Try to bring a fire out of him. Yeah. <laughs> In that same single? Hell yeah, the same single. <laughs> I don't. I guess I would like to see it bring a fire out of who Jason Jordan, because mm-hmm. can't nobody seem to get it out of him. right now. He's just throwing lettuce, <sighs> literally, literally. Oh boy, what lettuce. was that? But that that was a big pile of fuck. That was that of, was terrible. Twice. It's a lot of produce. Yes, no escalation. <laughs> just no. no escalation of something fun. Like it doesn't cut the power. Doesn't cut the lights. Isn't in the production truck. Doesn't do, do something. Just, he, he didn't blend it to a smoothie and then dump it on no, him. No, he just comes out all of a sudden. It's just lettuce. Like. Fuck, who's that? Yeah. I want to know what's happening in WWE creative right now. Mm. Because something is going on where people are like, what do we do? What do we do? And then other times they're nailing it. Yeah. They're doing yeah. a great job. Like, not to say, oh, everything's crap. They do some yeah, good they do stuff. So. Yeah, they do so. And then that segment happens. <laughs> you're like. Three times on the show. You're like, oh, this is a pay-per-view. Y'all pumped up. You've got the world watching now because you pumped up with one main article. And you have someone throwing lettuce. And you got somebody throwing lettuce as an intermission. And I haven't thrown lettuce once as a thing. Like, yeah, sure, fine. Throw some produce. Yeah. But not twice. twice. Well, and not then he just he, he just sheepishly walked away the first time, and I was like, uh, "Okay, that's a se- and Elias isn't pissed." <laughs> and then they come out again, and then it's then it's just the match. Like, who cares? That did nothing for anybody. Anybody? No. It it was very very weird. Um. So the whole under siege thing. Does this all make sense at all, or should we just enjoy it, Scotty? I mean, do you totally le- makes leading sense. into Survivor Series is this something that. You know, essentially, it seems like no titles will be on the line. It's, it's not to mention bragging rights, the old pay per view, but that's kind of what the Survivor Series Why not is kind of shaping up to be. Well, then let's mention it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, direct comparison. We were talking for the show, and Jay mm-hmm. brought it up that it is it is a direct parallel. And bragging rights was a cool show. I like the it's idea. A cool concept. And now they have the split brand, so it works even better. Like they stay split, mm-hmm. and I like. SmackDown coming in. I like there being fights. Uh, it does make sense to me. I like Shane leading the charge. I like SmackDown ending with Daniel Bryan talking about, I didn't really like this, but I guess you're going to have to deal with whatever comes. Yeah, Raw didn't come this week, but they may come later. Right. You don't know when they're going to come. You don't know when it's going to happen. There may be a sneak attack somewhere. Yeah. They'll figure that out, or they'll figure out which guys they can send over. Because, mm-hmm. of course, it's not going to be the entire roster. If Raw was smart, they would send over Bo Dallas, Bray Wyatt, <laughs> and Roman oh. Reigns. And JoJo to do the interview. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And go, yeah, good luck finding a team now. <laughs> oh, boy. That was... You were so reckless. <laughs> that was some strategy I right just there. want him to tell everybody to Bo, leave. You can get rid of viral meningitis. <laughs> Bo, leave. <laughs> Mm. I am mad we were cheated out of seeing Bray Wyatt in drag. I do. I will admit that was the one thing I was a little. Yeah, <laughs> it might not be over. That could re pick up if you think you, you can pick that back up out of nowhere. Sure. Yeah. Like Bray he's ready. You know, the demon is there now. He's ready. Although it's just it's getting closer to Road to WrestleMania time. So whether or not they drop it because they have something else in mind. Yeah. Because right out the Survivor Series, you go into the last two pay per views for the year. The last two solo ones, whichever ones those are going to be, somebody's going to get Armageddon or whatever they're going to call it. Mm-hmm. And you get the last two individuals. And then right after that, here's the rumble. Well, you're talking about is Bray Wyatt, can he just do that? What is Finn Balor going to do after defeating AJ Styles and then just getting decimated by a 47-year-old Kane? Um, I hope to God they don't do what everybody's thinking they might do. Which is? Have him win this rumble. Because that'll be the worst thing. Kane? I, Mayor Kane? No. Hell no. I'm oh, talking damn. about Finn Balor. He better win Mayor. I really <laughs> hope he no, wins. I think he lost. That's why he's back. No, it's not until no, next year. Yet. Oh, so he must be done. He's chilling. He, he took time off to campaign <laughs> and, I don't know, uh, chill. And now he's back. The actual election won't happen until next year. Wait Kane, a minute. Kane is incapable of chilling. <laughs> well, technically. True. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just want to know, what is that debate on stage going to be like against his <laughs> his opponent? My my opponent is here now, but in four hours, he'll have on tights and boots. Like, <laughs> And here is footage of him using a car battery to a man's testicles. testicles. Do you want this person as your mayor? Yes. yes. Yeah. He gets <laughs> stuff done. Absolutely. And to be fair, if you're going to run for mayor as a pro wrestler, Tennessee, not a bad state to do it. Yeah. 
Rose Hill? Is it Rose Hill? Something it, like Knob County. Knob County. Something mm-hmm. or other. It's not bad thing. And actually, I found out today, I did a Sean Waltman's show, and he mentioned the county that Kane is running in. It was the county named after Sean's great, 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 like, grandfather or something. So it's a weird rest- connection. Okay, we're a very weird connection. Yeah, but pretty wow. cool connection, nonetheless. So, yeah, I mean, so you're saying Finn winning the Rumble? Well, people are saying Finn is supposed to go up against Lesnar at the Mania. Because they were talk, it was a talked about thing. Well, that that's way down the road. I'm just saying, but that's when you start setting stuff up. But Finn getting destroyed by Kane, come on, he could have destroyed anybody. We are talking about the WWE. Mm-hmm. We have seen it before. We have seen somebody get beat, as they say, pillar to post, molly whopped, get molly whopped, <laughs> and next thing you know, they are in a title contention. Next thing you know, they are being pushed to the stars. Mm. So why would this be a shock? Jinder I mean, Mahal. Uh, Jinder oh, Mahal. So I'm saying that wrong, right, Jay? Jinder uh, Mahal. Believe, yeah, that's right. I believe it's... Jinder Mahal? That's the right way to say it. <laughs> Mahal? As Paul Heyman so adequately put it. You gotta say it like Brock Lesnar did that one promo where they was like, whatever you put on a teleprompter, he'll read it. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Best thing ever. <laughs> Best thing ever. Mm-hmm. But wh- is it a shot? Jinder Mahal was Jobber Mahal. For years, walked back in, got poured soda on by Rob Gronkowski, and got embarrassed in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania. I would test that soda, by the way. There's something in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that was not normal soda. It was, no. that was Gronk, so, it was Gronk energy drink. Remember a, when Monster gave him his own energy drink? Yeah, yeah, and a month later, a month later, became WWE Here's the champion. Thing, though, we saw it coming, so I think you went to the Business Summit, correct? Yeah. And they came back from it, and Dale said, uh, hey, um, don't be shocked. By the way, Dale Rutledge, uh, not on the show this week. Follow him at The Walking Dale. But you will hear him with our special guest, Marty Skrull, coming up in the episode. Uh, Scotty and Dale sat down with him, so of course he's on the The Bullet episode. Club Zone? Yeah. The oh. Bullet Club. Marty Skrull, the villain. So Dale said, I'll never forget, he goes, uh, he goes hey, um... It's going to sound weird. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you see Jinder Mahal really doing something in the next couple of months. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, they made a point to say how important international is for them. And they're going Even the more so than the past. Because internationally, they're amazing. And they right. always have been. But they made a point to say it. He goes, I'm telling you. You're going to think I'm crazy. But Jinder Mahal is going to be doing something big. I really think that's going to happen. And within a month. He was done. He was. And I think everybody was like, okay, we know when we we heard the WWE was expanding into India. Yeah. We're like, cool. This is why he's number one. Dale's Dale's very astute. He was sitting there at the business summit. He's like, "Uh uh-oh, this is going to (laughs) happen. But then when you heard when everybody outside of the business summit heard, you were like, okay, is he going to win against Orton? And then he won. And everybody's face was like. But I'm okay with that. Because Orton's had. That's fine. That's fine. Him beat Orton for the title was cool. And then you were like, this isn't going to last that long is right. it this, this can't last longer than Shinsuke's two case coming Shinsuke's Bobby like Roode's, Roode's coming Bobby Roode, this can't oh 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 this can it's weird I love the fact that it's lasting a long time but it <laughs> just seems like it's been so much longer than it really is hey Jinder Mahal's WWE title reign is officially longer than all three of Roman Reigns' title reigns wow combined really yes when well, actually- Reigns is the good guy, you know. They're always on the chase. It doesn't matter as much as Reigns is the guy now. He, right. He, you know, as much as well, they've been pushing him down everybody's throat. The infected guy. The infected guy. Oh, but they've been pushing him down everybody's throat. Question. Oh, that's dangerous. Don't do that. <laughs> is that something? <laughs> I got to look up when Jinder Mahal actually won. Backlash. Backlash. In Which, Chicago. I was there. Yeah, Backlash in, in Chicago. In late May-ish? Uh, no. April. No, because when, when was Mania? Backlash is probably four well, weeks ba- after Mania. Yeah, it's tricky because Backlash doesn't fall the same it's place it used, used to, to fall. fall. Yeah. So, it's, you know, we're, yeah, like you mentioned Armageddon earlier, it's like we have the. You knew the time schedule of what pay per views were. The era time. Yep. Like, no. Either way, though, be. by Survivor Series, it's going to be at least six months. Yeah. And he's going into the Royal Rumble guaranteed at minimum. WWE champion. If he loses at WrestleMania, that validates him even more. To go into WrestleMania as the WWE champ again, whether people want to hate it or not, like I said, right now he's a valid champion. Mm-hmm. He is not a transitional champ, which everybody thought he would be. May twenty first, two thousand seventeen. So we're already over five months. We're ago. over five months as a look, which we shouldn't technically be saying five months because we've gotten so programmed to seeing people drop a title so mm-hmm. quick. Sure, we've gotten so programmed that ninety days as a champ is probably the longest you'll see. So five months, we're like, whoa. When you used to see people run for a year. Mm-hmm. 
But now you got Jinder Mahal at five months beating Shinsuke Nakamura. But they was like, yeah, this is, he's getting the title, right? He's he's getting no no. But that's more international, right? <laughs> this, this, this it's, that's a fair point. Oh that's... wait, he's gonna win all oh, the Punjabi prison. Of course he's gonna win in that. Let's go back. Wait, hell in the cell. N- no. Okay, I, I don't know what more you. <laughs> I'll say this: I thought Jinder's best promo was this week on SmackDown. Um, you know, the Singh brothers, they do have that little added, you know, uh, protection, if you will, and they're the martyrs for him and stuff. But, you know, I- I'm interested to see if, if we do, and I know Scotty still doesn't believe we're going to have a one on one Brock gender match. No, I do now. I saw a graphic. What so you now you is? believe it? Yeah. <laughs> what do you- on Raw, they showed the graphic of that'll be the match oh. before, before that. Are oh, you talking about with the Singh brothers? No, I'm talking gender versus Brock, because uh-huh. I thought going into that before, you know, Brock and Heyman responded, it's like, oh, well, this will be the, the captains of their team oh, for their I, brand. I told you guys on here on an episode that the main event was Survivor Series. But he doesn't have to believe you. I thought no, you'd been hanging I, around Roman Reigns. See, I I'm like, you're, you're sick. <laughs> I knew Scotty didn't want to believe. I said, Scotty, I looked at both of you guys. <laughs> That was Scotty when you're like, trust me, I know these things. Scotty's like, <laughs> I was like, Scotty, the main event is the WWE champion Jinder Mahal versus the Universal champion Brock Lesnar. <laughs> he's not on the video game cover. He's not the he's not downloadable character. He's not even in the promo with Snoop Dogg rapping. That's a good point. Oh, is that right? He's not. Watch the Snoop promo. Snoop doesn't know who he is either. Yo, he uses damn near everybody else. Mm-hmm. He does not even talk about him. Mm. He talks about beasts. He talks about be blessed, be a demon, be all this. He does not once mention the WWE champion. And when he even says, and and that guy. And that guy. He's talking about Jack Gallagher. Gala Gallagher. And that could have been anybody. That could have been Tinder. Well, to be fair, the only words that go around with gender would be Tinder and Hinder. Doesn't matter. You can say champ something right. and have him show up, but you don't mm-hmm. even mention him. Maharaja? Right, Maharaja. <laughs> Maharaja. Oh boy. Uh, How many ma- modern day Maharaja shirts have been sold? Are there shirts? Yes. The goddamn <laughs> Oh, in India, uh, plenty. If there are not- shipping, though. <laughs> Whoa, <expensive>. Shipping's rough. <laughs> shipping. He's $47,000. Oh, sure. If you are not buying modern, if you are walking around with a modern day Maharaja shirt, do you ask somebody, did you get that on clearance? Like, do you, do you like, <laughs> you know who definitely has one? There's this Instagram account going around called Wrestling Dad, where it's a, this wrestling fan from India. His dad loves wrestling, mm-hmm. and he just films him watching wrestling events and just his dad's commentary on it. Like, he's really, really into it. So, he, I, he, one of the videos, he's wearing a modern day Maharaja t shirt. Okay. Yeah. All right. Class. So we got right. one. Also, paid, paid for the shipping. Also, those promos that are going to happen face to face, the Singh brothers are going to get buried by just Paul Heyman. Yep. Well, they got to look out. Remember what happened to J and J Security <laughs> when, when Brock, Brock gets did. a hold of a tiny person? <laughs> he just throws you off. Not it's, to mention it's what Randy Orton from of Mice and Men. Yes, it is. You got to look out, little rabbits. You're going to die. <laughs> I don't want to kill the rabbit. I killed the rabbit. Well, I killed the Singh brothers. I'm well, sorry. We, well, we thought Orton killed one of the Singh oh. brothers before. Remember, wasn't that mm-hmm. <laughs> he hit one through him and Aaron Orton turned around like, yee, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're lightweight. Yeah. Oh, they are really light. Luckily, That's why they, they don't let us on 205 Live. <laughs> oh, these dudes are really. Everybody, everybody's not 205? Oh. <laughs> 140, oh, lordy. That's the show he's on. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so Paul Heyman just knocked it out of the park this week. As always. You know, we're going to have the one on one match. As far as the whole under siege thing, you know, Shane came out and just explained on SmackDown. He goes, hey, I was told at an early age, you know, if you're going to get into a fight, strike first. Here's the story that I want to see, and I don't know if it's going to play out, but let us not forget Invasion Angle, 2001. Booker said he's never seen this in his entire life, well, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I just, want, I just want to say that I, I love you, Book. You're my homie. I love him, too. He's, I love him, too. Technically, he's doing his job. He's doing his and job. he's <laughs> never seen it. He lived it. Sure. Okay. Is that the best way you can do it? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help uh, uh, explain this better than Booker can. Because I was like... He, ha- seen- he invaded. Never saw the invasion. <laughs> I've never seen this entire 26 years of the business. Sir, you came in here with those stubble dreads, and you were the five-time WCW champion. Vengeance uh, 2000. (laughs) Yes. Wow. But go ahead, Johnny. I'm sorry. (laughs) Anyways, so here's the story that I think would be awesome is the fact that, okay, Invasion 2001. Mm -hmm. Kurt Angle was part of the WCW side with with, uh, Steve Austin. He turns and helps WWE, helps Vince defeat Shane and the Invasion. 
Why doesn't Shane come out and say, hey, Kurt, I didn't forget that you screwed me in 2001. I could have had a whole different WWE if the, we would have won the invasion. You're thinking too much like logical. A lot of angle. I'm just saying that the no, history no, I, wrote itself. The story's no, 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 right no, no. there. I, that's what I'm saying. You're thinking logical mm. because a lot of times there are angles that have been rehashed that you can be like, yo, there's footage on the network. And they don't bring it up. So why would you expect? I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it would make all the sense think? in the world. Sort of, because the invasion didn't make a whole lot of sense. And it hurts my brain to think about it and go like, <laughs> wait, what happened again with who and what? I feel like you just go king of the ring and go, we fought like we had knockdown drag out fights. Mm -hmm. like, That's true. We're fighting again. Okay. And bring that one. That's a little easier. Bring okay. that feud. The one where I tried to throw you through the glass oh. and it didn't break. Yeah. I tried to stop you years ago. Okay. okay. And you are going to stop me? No, I'm going to put you out. And that is one of the... A lot of people say that's always... Like, anytime... What's your favorite matches ever? That's always the one that pops up in people's minds. Like, it's an amazing so match. Is, oh, it's is terrifying. Shane, so do we set up Shane to angle at Mania? Mm, they might be the captains of their brand's teams. I, I see that's the thing that scares me. I do not want to see Angle wrestle anymore. But think of all the other outfits he can wear. I don't care. Think of all the cosplay that Angle can do. What if he that's dressed up as characters. a bludgeon brother? Although wrong brand, but still. I want to see him dress up as a member of the Mean Street Posse. Oh, sweater vests. <laughs> sweater vests. Pete Gas. He's brother. available. He'll do it. Yeah, Pete Gas is happy to do it. <laughs> He'd be way happy to do it. Mm -hmm. Look, he's got his stuff hanging up and starts and pressed every week. Ready, Shano? I never know when I'm going to get this call. I never Man. know when I'm going to get this call. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's see. We got the captains of the women's teams have been decided. Alicia Fox won the triple threat. I love everything about that because that's going to be entertaining. Shocking. And, uh, totally shocking. shocking. Yes. That's great. It's fantastic. And Becky Lynch, not really a surprise, is going to captain the SmackDown women's team. So we essentially are going to have champ versus champ. Right now it's looking like Natty versus Alexa Bliss. And then we have, I guess, a five on five? I hate it. Hate what? I hate Natty versus Alexa Bliss. I agree. I think it's weird. I think it's going to be hard to build interest in that. Alexa's good on the mic. Natty's better, but I just don't. Uh... Nobody. Who do you cheer for? Exactly. That's yeah. tough. Who do you cheer for? That, that's why I think someone, one of them two loses it. Before Survivor Series. Does. Well, you got two matches like that. Because you also have the United States champion and the Intercontinental champion. You got Miz and Baron Corbin. Oh, that's another match. I don't, I, think they like, take, I don't think they take it off the Miz. Nope. No. A, I, the, look, the Miz led his team at TLC. Right. He has been the dominant force on the mic outside of Paul Heyman. And he is the Intercontinental you champion. You could argue. I mean, I, to me, Neville's still superstar of the year, even though he might not be qualifying anymore. But... You could argue Miz has been superstar. Yes, there. you I, definitely can. I, mm -hmm. I, I used to say I used to hate saying that, but you are, honestly can. Miz has been a one on promos. Yep. His ring work has been phenomenal. Him playing the scared heel and doing what he needs to do. The one the guy like, hey, I got all of you big guys. Go do work, and ever, all the big guys listen, and he falls back, and then he yeah. just sings. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, all right. Him and he does a lot of Rihanna. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I just hate to know what's in wah, your car. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Scotty, I don't make it in this car. It's because I pushed Johnny out while we were on the Careful with that car. It's got 200,000 miles, miles on it. it. But, yeah, it's just, again, Miz and Baron Corbin. Yeah, Intercontinental Champion yeah. versus U.S. Champion. It sounds great. Two mid-card title holders against each other. We really don't care about Baron Corbin. It, yeah. It's not, like the those guys' styles together don't seem like an interesting matchup. At all. So, you know... I I could see Ty Dillinger getting it real quick, a hot shot championship. I can see that. Now, Miz Dillinger versus Dillinger. Dillinger would Miz, versus Miz would be nice. That's something, because maybe we mm -hmm. could finally start to see more of a character from Ty. Right now, all we got is him counting to 10, which it's fun to do, but there's so much more to Ty Dillinger as a human being than just the damn 10. So could be rude. Rude, same thing. Like That'd be, uh, that'd be a perfect guy Ooh. to have it for now and then have Miz go up against him. And then when he comes back, Ziggler and Rude going for the IC yeah, title. I, was, I, I, agree. I agree with both of you. Or guys. the United States. Right? I agree with you, but I just think we got him so tied up in this uh, Dolph Ziggler feud. With Which Bobby is Rude. really you weird. You know, we got that tied up right now. So you can't... To try, I mean, it's WWE creative at times. But to watch him just say... Let's go. Well, here's a free one. Here's a free easy one. Uh, you know, Rude keeps challenging Dolph. Dolph keeps saying no, and then Rude goes, fine. Challenges for the U.S. title, wins it, and then Dolph goes, I'll take that challenge now. I'll fight you now. 
Okay. Because now there's gold on the line. Now there's gold on the line. Okay. Mm. I like where you went, Scotty. It's like, easy. I like Scotty Narvis thinking. It's easy to justify yeah. wrestling. It's, it's, sometimes it gets too complicated. <laughs> to be fair, it's very easy to not justify wrestling as well. That oh, is man, that is so easy. easy. <laughs> I think you're right, though. I think it's way more likely to not have Corbin versus Miz than it is to have Alexa versus Natty, I think. Right. You know. I'm surprised they gave the belt to Corbin. I guess they were like, look, ah. we took away your money in the bank. Here's something. But think about this, though. It's like now you have AJ challenging, well, gender. Lord knows when. I- oh, at, oh, if that's what that'll be. If he if he survives, if gender survives this, which he's if he wins either way, it's going to mania and it's going to be one of the most and maybe it's what they want. It's going to be one of the most hated title reigns of all time, whether or not yep, it's a good thing, whether or not. And if AJ Styles winning at WrestleMania would look very nice, especially since he lost. Didn't he lose a shame? Or did he beat Shane? No, he beat, he beat Shane. Shane. He beat he Shane. He lost to Jericho. Jericho. He lost to Jericho. That's what it was. He lost his first to Jericho. Mm-hmm. Then he beat Shane McMahon. What would be dope was to, to solidify AJ? We don't have to solidify it, but to solidify Yeah, you put his, him in the ring with Cena. It's just like, yeah, no, we get it. We, this, this is amazing. <laughs> we, we get it. But then you, you solidify his WWE career yep. by having him win the WWE title at WrestleMania. And you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone on either roster that gets a bigger reaction than AJ Styles. I mean, yeah, there's a few and but he's who's earned it more. But it's also it's a it's the entire crowd. Loving like there him. are guys that yeah. it's split uh-huh. or they feel one way or the other like people just love AJ. The crowd, and that's so rare these days. Yep. The, the whole crowd like look, that man can never come out even when he's supposed to be a heel. Nope. You can't. Mm-hmm. Nobody can boo him. And he did a good job as being a heel. He yeah, really yes. really he said job. those lame catchphrases of "I'm the face that runs the place." It's like, yeah, that's kind of hokey. But by the end, it's like, yeah, you, he, he owns this. this. You own. Th- Remember Smackdown, the attack on Shane? Good God! Smackdown mm-hmm. Live is the house that AJ Styles built. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. You know so. Mm. And uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, uh, they had a bit of a face off with Shane. Sami loses the Randy Orton, gets a low blow. So technically, he's not on the SmackDown team. Kevin Owens has to fight for his spot next week. Uh, no idea what exactly that's going to become. Uh, Seem upset, Jay. Yeah, because what was the purpose of the whole Sami Zayn thing? If he's not going to start winning. Well, but he did the previous week over Orton I mean, why not keep with the low blow. Yeah, but why not keep it going? Well, because now he can complain about that. You know, him and Kevin can say he was wrong. Kevin can take that spot for him. Kevin can turn on Orton, and Sammy can be on the sidelines. And Sammy, just in this moment for the team, okay, I look at it as like Sammy got screwed over, mm-hmm. can complain more, wants another opportunity because it's the land of opportunity, and I got screwed over. Yeah, but you hit him in the balls. Well, but then you hit him in the balls. <laughs> A lot of balls. A lot of balls. A lot of hitting. balls hitting. I just, I, I get, I, I'm 100% with you on that. I just, I want to see something be done with him. Mm-hmm. We keep talking about, they keep talking about how this kid has the potential. He can go. Yes, he can. For those of us who know what we've seen on the Indies, Ring of Honor, NXT, till the moment he got to the main roster, it was like, oh, this, what, what just happened? Mm-hmm. He got to the main roster, everything changed. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now you know what he can do. Let him go. Look, we let AJ Styles and Finn Balor go for TLC. Yeah. From a dude who had to take an 18-hour flight across countries. Two nights in a row. Yeah. Two nights in a row. When there are other people at the show like, I can do this. (laughs) At the show. I work here. (laughs) Can you imagine being AJ Styles and you in the back and you're like, all right, hold on. We'll talk about my match in a sec. Hop on a flight. We got to play, right? Oh, man. So we got to hurry and do this. I gotta go. What you mean? <laughs> yeah, I you have to on Raw tonight. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go do TLC tomorrow, and I gotta do Raw. How, how, how what, wait, wait, you're on our show, and hey, man, I just work here. And I tell you, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like Sky said, there's a bunch of other guys in that back that could have took that spot. Rhino, he slayed. Whoa, <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I'm a diehard Rhino fan. Sure, I love, Rhino was the reason I, I have my career. I, I Is that my, right? Yes, I molded my stuff. I love the rookie monster. I love the man beast from ECW. So he was what I wanted to be getting in the ring. And now to watch this Rhino is like, can you put that Rhino out the pasture? Because this is this is bad. He hey, loves spray cheese on a cracker. He's having fun. Whatever. I know, I know Terry's having fun. I know he is. But God damn it. <laughs> put somebody through a table in the power. What if he wakes up? What better show to be at than TLC for Rhino? 
to get against out, a demon to get outworked by Finn Balor to take that coup de gras. First of all, that coup de gras, that double stomp from off the top rope, that needs to be illegal. I agree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are we allowing this as a move? I don't I'm, know. I'm gonna, what you gonna do? I'm gonna go to the top rope. It's and dangerous. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stump on your intestines. I don't like it. <laughs> You know, excuse me. I'm about to give you a small bowel obstruction. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm start. I want you to tighten your muscles. It won't hurt as much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's but, yeah, it's gross. I mean, AJ, yeah, but I just they let them go at TLC. They let them do what they do, and you could you couldn't even tell that AJ had been on a flight 18 hours. No, mm-hmm. he's just. I mean, God, I was gonna say phenomenal, but I mean, how much good sleep can a man get in an 18 hour flight that he's comfortable enough to when he gets off a plane go straight to the arena? Yeah. I've been on my fair share of 15 to 16 hour flights, and it's a weird sleep schedule. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And he's go straight, to, go straight to the arena, literally is getting dressed like, so what are we doing? Yeah, your only option, honestly, <laughs> flipping around. <laughs> on a flight like that, you just keep drinking water. You make sure you stay as hydrated as possible so you can hop off the plane and still function as a person. That's it. That's all you can do. They let him do it. Like I said, they did it, but it's just... it. You got AJ going. At, he's the number one contender. Does he get it after Survivor Series? Does he get it at the Royal Rumble? Does he get it at WrestleMania? He gets the title again. And this time he gets to run with it. But the only problem is you got to see it down the future. Yes, you get the Jinder Mahal rematch. Who becomes number one contenders behind that? Do you turn Bobby Roode heel? Do you finally let Dolph Ziggler do something again? Do you go back to the Kevin Owens promo? Mm-hmm. Do you say, hey, we tried to flash and pan one Sami Zayn. Here you go. Mm-hmm. Mm. Huh. So, well, before we move on to the news, uh, there is a certain individual that we definitely have to discuss with Scott Narver. Once again, the cruiserweight champion. Yeah. All right. WWE creative. What the hell is going on? Uh, easy. He's got people watching 205 Live. That's easy. Uh, that's all it is. What, 10? Is that all it took? Like 10 people to watch? Because that's all it is, right? There's like no. 10, 15 people. Think about it. The cruiserweights have main evented Raw three, four weeks in a row. Because of Enzo. I mm. thought everybody else wants to go home early. Could be. Could be. That's what I thought. That sounds like it. But or, nonetheless. Good Lord. People are sick. They're dropping. The <laughs> little guys seem immune. Oh, man. <laughs> but none, whatever it is, you can still, even though people are dropping, there's still other people they could have put in the main. Are well, you the watching weird 205 thing is, Live? Either of you? Um, I, I didn't watch they it this week. They could have I did. I have kind of been. I, I didn't watch I it this have week. Kind of, been. but the question that I have is: Okay, the whole roster beats up Enzo, and all of a sudden this week on Raw, he's got like five buddies dancing behind him, like paid him th- off, right? Like three count all over again. So, like, what? Where's the Who's reason? Alex Wright. That's Wonderkind. <laughs> Who's Alex Wright? Oh, oh, oh. Tony Nese. Is it Tony Nese? <laughs> sure. I don't know. <laughs> or is it Noam Dar? It's Noam Dar. But, but just the the reasoning. I just don't know. Where's the reasoning? That's he's all. paying him off. He's paying him off. That's what the, I mean. That's what they've been saying over commentary. Got, he keeps talking about how much, how much money, money he, has he has that he won't give to Queen B, uh, but he'll give it to other members of Two Hundred Five Live. Let's hope it is Queen B is a stripper from Buffalo. Yeah, no, Scott's a big fan of Queen B. Yeah, Queen we B's all we. Great. I mean, to be fair, we're okay. all very Queen B audience. should be cruiserweight champion. Yeah, yes, she should. Yes, Lord, <laughs> Amen. Have you seen Queen B? Yes, I have. I've seen several pictures. Oh, you have? Oh. I've never looked her up, but uh, what? You, she's you, from you, Buffalo. You might want to get your life together, sir. Really? So you're a fan in more ways than one? In more ways than four. Do you follow her on Twitter? Not yet, because I don't want people... To, there are people who have alerts on your tweets, like when you start following somebody. I don't need nobody to be like, yo, Jay Washington just started following Queen Bee. What's, what's going on with that? All right, well, <laughs> I, I have not seen that Twitter yet, but we'll have to check it out. What do you think overall? Um, so what's going to happen? I was waiting for... Braun Strowman to fight the garbage truck on Raw. That did not happen. Are we not going to see Strowman until like the Raw before Survivor Series? Which and then works. he's going to please tell me he's just going to climb out of the garbage truck after to. being there for weeks. Look, Braun Strowman's new gimmick is whatever you put him in, he stays in, mm-hmm. and Remember? he's a superhero. Like he, Braun Strowman <laughs> he's is Shredder legit. For Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> right, he is legit. Nineteen seventies, early eighties wrestling to where he does things that you know are not real, but you don't care. At TLC, Kane choke slammed him off the stage, then pulled eighteen chairs on him <laughs> and watched him get up. And Kane was like, "What the fuck?" Yep. <laughs> and everybody was like, that, "That's not supposed to happen." I was like, "Yeah, I'd have walked off. Mm-hmm. I, I'd have, if I was on, in that match, I'd have been like." You know what? I got to catch a flight. I got to go and get up. I haven't called my brother in a while. I got to see how he's, he's doing. doing in life. That's what's, that in the garbage truck. He'll be like chasing the garbage truck down the street. Can you imagine that? 
Get over here! I hate, Braun Strowman cutting promos is by far the most hilarious thing I've ever heard. It's fun. It's, it's so fun. Because he's in on it. He gets it. He gets it right now. Mm-hmm. You guys just stay out of my way. I'll take care of the shield. I'm telling you, his the everything... Whole- Mm. With Curtis Axel, like, then why don't you go do it? Why don't you why go you, do it? Why don't you go challenge the shield? <laughs> huh? What? It's it's just, it's it's simple, it's basic, but he's got the scary voice. It all works fine. Dude, if Braun Strowman was around in the 80s, he would have been a massive action star as the villain in so many movies. He would have been His whooping. delivery is so He'd have been 80s. whooping Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. He'd have slammed Carl Weathers on his neck. <laughs> he would have been in, uh, he for sure would have been in uh, Hercules somehow. He'd have been Hercules. Uh, he would have probably been the Predator. Like, could you imagine? Mm-hmm. What? Lethal Weapon. Oh, um, he'd have told shit out of Mel Gibson. He, he would have been Lethal Weapon 2. Lethal Weapon 2. Maybe. Yeah. Because they're, you know, Busey. Man, yeah, you got to have sure. Busey. Yeah. Yeah. So many good movies. I, I like Bron- I like what they're doing with him. Yeah. Look, I don't need him to have a title at all. Because I think you and I said this. You give him a title. Who takes it off of him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> who? Brock. Joe? Uh-huh. Brock can't. Oh, Joe. Yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think uh, Braun Strowman would be ready. That's who's missing. Who coming back around Survivor yeah, Series. Yeah, Joe. That's who it is. Because it was only six weeks or something like that. Six to eight weeks or whatever he was out for. He's been out a while. But they've been probably playing it like, yo, just just chill. We'll pay you. Chill. There's an illness around. Listen, look, stay back, man. You yeah. gone, stay in your pool. Go stay in your pool. Look, you live in Huntington Beach. You got hundred degree weather. Enjoy mm-hmm. that. Keep this hazmat suit on just in case. Mm-hmm. Play these video games. We need someone to survive <laughs> this plague. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, let's see what is next. Oh, really easy. It's a Slamcast news. Whoops. <laughs> oh no, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. How did you recuperate the news? Uh, it was deleted. It was the, deleted. The, the mouse band ran in here real quick. Damn. Wrestle Kingdom tickets already outpacing last year's rate, and they are now on sale to the general public. The funny thing is, Dale and I were discussing this, and he's been to Wrestle Kingdom. You're going this year. Mm-hmm. I said, where can people buy tickets as the public? And he sent me back the emoji of shoulder shrugging. Like The, the way New Japan does it is so confusing. I know there's a way to buy online tickets. It's very, very hard to figure out. Sure. So, But either way... So. Tickets are selling very, very well. So. It's in Japan, right? Yes. It's in Japan again. For right. sure. Uh, well, J- you know, they started doing things in America now, so... Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. Wrestle Kingdom is... Yeah. I mean, of course, it's a new Japan thing. I just wouldn't be surprised. They're like, let's try it. Yeah, absolutely. Or, would- or WrestleMania's like, no, nah, let's take over Japan. Japan. <laughs> Could you, right. Let's go. Let's let's book out the Tokyo Dome for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine what that would be like? We don't, we don't worry about this attendance record of 100 and 200,000. Mm-hmm. We just are in the Tokyo Dome for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. For the quiet, like, appeasing crowd with pockets of <laughs> super loud Americans and Brits. Uh, uh, okay, you ready? Uh, look at the cut angle. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Done. He's every, still alive. <laughs> every Japanese fan would learn, like, 19 American cuss words by the end of it. Uh, <laughs> Darn right. <laughs> Jimmy Jacobs made his return at uh, Wrestle Circus this past weekend, uh, having a thing with Sammy Callahan. And, uh, you know, he, he uh, spoke uh, spoke some words on the mic. He said, I've been writing promos for guys who couldn't hold my microphone, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, clearly he got he got fired for the photo he took with the Bullet Club. Um, but, uh, yeah, Wrestle Circus, I believe, Ring of Honor is also happening. Um, so a lot going on. So, uh, yeah, wishing the best, and, and hopefully it all works out. It's one of those guys who never had to worry about anything. I, I'm surprised. he. I know the checks might have been nice. Uh, I'm just surprised he was so easy. He was so easily persuaded into just saying, don't don't lace up. Just sit here with the pen and the paper. Yeah. When you know in his heart is like uh, through them ropes, right? I can I can go. Mm-hmm. Nah, you you stay here. You sit behind. You sit in gorilla. Mm-hmm. You sit here. Come here early. You know our call time is eleven o'clock. Every night you need to make sure you write these promos. This is where we're going. Have this done. You know your paychecks are gonna be nice. We are gonna fly you. Blah blah blah. But it, you know deep down in Jimmy Jacobs' heart, he like I'm, I'm Jimmy Jacobs. I right, can, I can I can do this. Yeah, I want out of the machine. Well, <laughs> you know, I want he's out. He's out. Yes, he is. Jeff Jarrett officially terminated from Impact, and uh, this is a real bummer. At Real Canadian Wrestling's event over the weekend, the promoter accused him of being inebriated um, during the match, and unfortunately, the video went online. It's just a bummer, man, because, you know, Scotty, Jarrett's always been really cool with us. Clearly, you and Shane have been invited to multiple Impact events. On your mark, uh, all the stars there have been very, very catering, Mm -hmm. and Jarrett was really the driving force behind that, so it's just... 
it sucks to see this. Hopefully, you know, whatever issues he's having, uh, you know, he can get them. Well, fixed. him and Matthews, they were both very kind. And Jarrett, uh, it, it's a shame. Uh, on a personal level, he's always been extremely nice to me and nice to the show and been very accommodating and helping us out and giving us his time and talking with us. Uh, yeah. It's a bummer. I hope things are well. It's like I, I want there to be some bat signal of DDP in the sky and go like, hey, help him out, man. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going on personally. And it's it's a bummer. It seems like things a year ago, he was on top of the world. And what we do know is, you know, Impact is going to get a brand new a brand new titles all the way around um, because Global Force is Jared's thing. He owns the brand. He owns the name. What happens with Global Force? I mean, at this point, it, it really seems to be kind of a... Hey, Corgan. Floating in the water. Yeah, I mean... Corgan, you looking to buy something else, too? He might. I mean, NWA is... uh, You know, once again, the title was on our show again, which is pretty cool. Um, We're actually going to have some challengers for the NWA heavyweight title coming up soon. You challenging for it? Uh, Definitely not. (sighs) Why is it every time we keep asking about are you getting in the ring and doing something? Definitely not. Mm -hmm. You just keep shooting it down, man. Stop acting like you don't want to be in... Because, Jay, I don't want to ruin the business. (sighs) Just too late for that. (laughs) If you not see what... Ooh, let me shut my mouth. All right. I, I just got into it with somebody the other day. They were like, well, you can't be like the, the generational thing. Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. It's not even just the fact that it's a whole bunch of flippity-flop stuff happening. It's just a lot of people don't care about it anymore. Matches used to have what's called ring psychology. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm very old school myself. I think we all are. Mm-hmm. You know, but don't, yeah. don't get me started. You know, don't, don't get my blood pressure rising. No. But no. it'll happen again. It will. It will happen again. You're already drinking this pump, pumpkin spice, four shots of espresso. That's going to raise it enough. First of all, let me just tell you about my drink, uh, Scotty. I've got a four shot of iced venti pumpkin spice latte, which means I'm going four. as ba- four shots. Yes, I'm going as basic as I can go. I'm and I needed as- him to explain what it meant. And I was like, uh, you can explain it as a white girl in Ugg boots liquefied. Now, it's <laughs> pretty much how do you explain it? And so Johnny was like, okay, I've never had this. Let me try it. And he mm-hmm. had a sip of it. He was like, okay, this sounds pretty this tastes pretty good. What's in it? Four shots of espresso. He was like, huh? Yeah, man, it's called jet fuel. That explains why he now looks like Doc Brown. <laughs> Great Scott Jay, all the shots. <laughs> Marty! This is white hair. Marty, your <laughs> daughter married a black man. <laughs> uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. saved the girl from jumping off a bridge this past week. Um, I, he came across a, a girl who was going to jump, and he tried to talk her down, and luckily he was able to reach out and grab her to safety, which is really strange but incredible. So kudos to him. Kudos wow. to Davy Boy Smith Jr. Yeah. Now, this is really amazing. Um, Nine Legends Film created and released a Roddy Piper documentary. It's called Roddy Piper in his own words. A percentage of all sales will be donated to the Doan Brecker Children's Hospital in Portland. That's a hospital that Roddy was really close to, would go there all the time, help the kids out. And it's actually available now. If you go to 9legendsfilm.com, that's N-I-N-E legendsfilm.com, for $7.99, you can get the documentary and also a separate film called Nine Legends that stars Bill Goldberg, Mike Tyson, and Chris Jericho, amongst others. And so um, I've seen, I read some quotes from Roddy's wife, mm-hmm. and it's just it's never before seen back like behind the scenes footage of Roddy Piper, and we know he had one of the most extraordinary lives of anyone in wrestling, let mm-hmm. alone human beings. Yes. It, I think there's a lot of ba- uh, behind the scenes um, from when they live. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. You, you showed the trailer to me, and Ooh. it was it looks cool. Like right, you know. We have no more Piper, so when we can get more Piper... We take our Piper. Yeah, because it's great. Like, he's he's always saying something interesting. The trailer itself has a couple of quotes that I hadn't heard him say before, and he just draws you in, you know, when he's got the dark tone, or when he's super happy, like, all of that. It's just, it's all throughout the film, so I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, and I spoke to the gentleman who did the film, and it really meant a lot to him, and so he actually reached out to us, and he said, uh, you know, I, I know of your show, is there any way, you know, you can discuss it? I said, absolutely. I'm like, Roddy Piper, he was a friend of mine. I mean, I, I helped his neck out. I did physical therapy on him, and he would hang out at the comedy store, let alone he was a hero to us growing up. Mm-hmm. And so we couldn't and recommend... And a villain. And a villain. And a villain. What a good one, too. Man, rest in peace to the coconut to Jimmy Snooker's face. Man. <laughs> and Jimmy Snooker, too. And Jimmy Snooker, of course. But yeah, you've got to go to... And the coconut. <laughs> and the coconut. <laughs> go to NineLegendsFilm.com, and you can get Roddy Piper in his own words on top of the Nine Legends film with Bill Goldberg, Mike Tyson, and Chris Jericho. So you get two films... For seven ninety nine, and that's a that's a, a deal. Whole, that's a really good deal. It's a, a whole, steal. Whole night of entertainment for you. Yeah. So nine legend films, nine legends Please go pick it up. 
Scotty, moving on. Impact time. I got to give Dan Lambert some credit. Dude knows how to cut a promo. Yeah, that was pretty good, huh? It was long, but it was cool. And then the America top team just beat down most of the Impact roster. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we talked about it last week. I, I wasn't totally up to date on all things Impact, but now I am. And you're saying, oh, it was the fighter. I can't remember his name. Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner, yeah. Holy crap. Really? Yeah. Stefan Bonner's involved. I'm thrilled. He's going to be in I was in, in Vegas this past week, and I had my, my uh, Ultimate Fighter finale mm-hmm. shirt of Forrest Griffin and Stefan Bonner going toe-to-toe, like, telling my girlfriend all about that fight. And I'm going, like, oh, someday I'll show you this fight. And then, meanwhile, Stefan Bonner's on impact doing stuff, getting skirmishes. He's actually worked one of my buddies back home, one of my good friends, Tristan Hayes. So I'm not surprised. He's been getting in the ring for a while. Right. Uh, he's, awesome. done some, he's done some indie stuff, and he's been working himself to get, you know, get ready for that impact debut so when you say Stephen Bond I'm like he's been working at it mm-hmm. so this isn't this isn't one of those just oh they put, had him pop up at the show and now right. you know he's doing it no he's been working so it's a good thing it's a good fit and he's gonna be in Bound for Glory which is pretty cool mm-hmm. dude I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do I'm a little you know nervous for the guys and girls on the roster but it's different that's what I like like they're taking Chances. Bound for Glory is a huge show for them. Yes, of course. Um, we already have the main event. We got Eli Drake and Johnny Impact. But they're doing things that are totally different. And Dan Lambert talked about it. He's like, everyone thinks I'm this horrible anti-wrestling guy. He's like, I'm the biggest wrestling fan that you know. And I'll prove it. And he has all this memorabilia, all these incredible titles that superstars and legends have won over the years. I can only assume they are his, right? Yeah, I mean, it's... When you see someone really good at it, you can tell they're a fan. When we mm-hmm. used to have the eras of uh, raw guest hosts, and you sniff them out real quick. Yes. Oh, my and you God. Go, yes. There's a fan. Lambert. <sighs> there is not a fan. You know, Jeremy Piven. Summerfest. Not a fan. Not you know. a fan. Uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer. Not, not a fan. Not a fan. No. Bob Barker. Enough of a fan. But like, he gets he a gets pass. It, you yeah. know, the, there's people that sort of just jump in the role. John Stewart, a fan, like who can play along and do it. And Lambert's clearly a fan. I mean, I can't believe some of the titles he was bringing out. That's really impressive. And it just adds even more to it. He's like, you know, you guys look at me as this, you know, evil individual. And and no, he's like, I love wrestling. He's like, but y'all have pissed me off. And so. (laughs) And he walks a really good line when talking about when they're doing the beatdown, saying, do you know who we are? Come on, fans. Come on, you pro wrestling fans. Are you are you supposed to boo now? Are you supposed to cheer now? He's not ever knocking it being a stage show or anything like that. It's more he's acknowledging the skill set that they have as wrestlers and the crowd, but we're mixed martial artists and we're fighters. You right. Know? And just you know, holding his camp high, which I thought was a really cool way of doing it. It's going to be a heck of a story leading in Bound for Glory for sure, which is coming up uh, less than two weeks. Yeah. Less than two weeks? Uh, November 5th? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. November 5th. Ottawa. On paper. Get your impact pizza. And I was told uh, tickets for Bound for Glory already sold out. That's a good thing to hear. It's great to That's hear. a great thing to hear. I, you know what? To be very honest, for them to be in Canada to do this, their big show of the year, their WrestleMania, be sold out. Yeah. I don't know how, I'm not sure how big the event, the event is. Matter. I'm not sure how the yeah. seats are. Doesn't but matter. Sold out. If, sold if out or sold out. And it's paid for? Great. Sold, right. Paid for, sold out. Sold out or sold out. Exactly. And that, that's what we want. Uh, looks like we have another match for Bound for Glory. Grado is now going to be facing Abyss in a Monsters Ball match. So really, for the first time on television, Joseph Park has basically admitted that he is also his own brother, Abyss. He is basically a split personality. And then Father James Mitchell haunted Grado in his car, which how could you not love that? They brought Father James Mitchell back? You damn mm-hmm. skippy. Again. <laughs> you see how shocked that's Because he was there for Slammiversary as well. Yep. It's it's great. I th- It's been a fantastic story. That's going to be such a great match. I fear for Grado's life. I fear for Abyss's Where's life. life? Uh, but, man, and they'll probably do some segments, too. Like, that seem... Uh, just a park or abyss seems to be in those you know you can cut away they go to the back and then we get some pre-tape segments of crazy shenanigans and then come back in and just th- those are the best no you sit there backstage like for those that don't know the business you're looking like how did he change clothes so fast yeah. <laughs> that's why they have them be there at 11 o'clock in the morning well we have what how many more episodes before bound for glory we have two more this two. weekend yeah so in all likelihood they're, they're, you're probably gonna write we're gonna see the build up of that yeah you know i hope so because one one of those a special show was great. Mm-hmm. And the coolest part about this past week, Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie main evented the episode. Kudos, ladies. Kudos, Impact, for doing that. And this match was dope. Uh, Taya won, but Rosemary missed it her afterwards and challenged her. I don't know what 
the match is per se, but she said there's going to be blood. So I don't know if we're talking first blood or what it is, but either way, Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie, that's going to be awesome. And I'll be honest, man, I say it every week. I think my three favorite personalities on television, as far as the female divisions go, where they're all on impact, but good luck finding anyone who's more committed to a character and anyone who's better on the mic than Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. She's stunning. She's one of the best. It's, it's, uh, it, I always think it's kind of a shame she's there in Impact. I'm I th- I'm thrilled she's there. And then when they say, oh, Bray Wyatt's going to be Sister Abigail, it's like, she's the one. Oh, my God. Could you imagine She's that? the one. I really want them to, I don't, man, yes, use her. I don't want WWE having Bray have to be Sister Abigail in drag. I just don't. No, it's weird. <laughs> it's, 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 oh, Jesus, no. She would be the, I mean, wow. Because she's think about it. Think about WrestleMania and the celebrities. You have... Bray Wyatt and Sister Abigail and Tyler Perry and Medea versus whoever. Well, that, that's well, a Halloween first all, movie. First of all, you say Medea, not Medea. Oh, sorry. I was hanging out with Kurt Angle. I know you were. I know you were. He'll <laughs> <laughs> go up against the Ginger Mayhall. <laughs> that, could be, that could be Medea's next Halloween film. Next year. Yeah. <gasps> Medea oh, gets to the ring. Oh. Medea goes to uh, the Wyatt compound. Yeah, Medea. three. We're here. Get me off this damn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I will say, I'm telling you, I, I, Rosemary Ty Valkyrie, it's going to be great. And she is just so good at what she does. I would love to have her on the show. I don't know if she does interviews, but we should try. She has. Huh. She has. She was on Landstorm's podcast recently, but, you know, hey, she's a, she's a she demon as, assassin. Was she as Rosemary? Well, yeah. Okay. We, She's a demon assassin. You gotta, really, you gotta, you gotta appeal to her somehow. We gotta. Find Ali's a, a way. friend with her, and you know how does that happen? I mean, we could just, you know, proclaim her your love and admiration for her, and that well, her that show. tends to scare him off, Johnny. I'll yeah, be totally honest. That's fair. We should at least try it. Mm, all right, all right, sounds good. Uh, that pretty much does it for the show. Actually, no, no, wow. we got a we got an interview, special guest time. So, Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor also has a lot going on. <laughs> I mean, the Bullet Club and Cody, they've been cutting some promos. Shouts out to Cody, who was like, y'all thought this was a game with yeah. me on this mic. Y'all, y'all thought this was a game. I'm going to show you how I really do this. And he was just, Ring of Honor has given that man the ball. I'm, yep. it's a, I'm, I'm in a conflicted place with it real quick. I'll just say this real fast. Okay. I love Cody Rhodes, mm-hmm. Cody Runnels, whatever he's going to be. I'm mad that they had to take it off one of my mentors to give it to him. One of the men who helped train me, Christopher right. Daniels. Of course, yeah, yeah. But I'm, but him and Kazarian are still doing great. They're still great, but I mean, yeah. the fact you finally gave Danny the ball, Daniels the ball, he finally got the title that's yeah. eluded him. For a little bit. And, yeah. and, and a little bit, but he didn't get a real chance to run with it. Because I understand the company motto, business-wise, it's dope to put it on him. But nonetheless, Cody has been killed. He's like, oh, nobody else wanted to show me as a star? It's working. It's wor- I guarantee if he goes, if he goes back... They're going to be like, uh, so what do you want to do? It's phenomenal. Like, he is just, he's a guy playing with house money. Oh, he, absolutely. He, he's a guy that is independently wealthy. He doesn't, it's not like he's he needs the paycheck per se. And he's a guy that is just having so much fun with the Young Bucks, who know they're the coolest tag team in the damn world. In the world. Hangman Page, who is just learning so much by being around them all the damn time. And Marty Skrull, who is so unique and happens to be our special guest on the show. It's just like a crazy awesome combination. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's really fun. And then they're, they are pulling no punches. Nope, and they are marketing geniuses. They could yeah. open up a, a marketing firm after all this and go. They have learned how to capitalize. I've never Everything. seen so many Bullet Club shirts. Yeah, so many Cody American Nightmare shirts. So many Young Buck shirts in so many hot topics and just different stores in my life. And on guys and gals, on guys of different. And- Everybody like different creeds, different yeah. races, like just everybody. Everybody, everybody embraces it, and but, no matter what gets thrown at them, they turn it into something profitable for them. Oh, cease and desist. Okay, check out this T-shirt. All right, two sweet turned into one sweet. You got it. <laughs> I mean, it just knew how to roll with it. Was like, we'll get around this every way. They're, they're like oh, and they're TLC's like, quick little like, uh, oh, well, here we'll we'll have our footage we'll have your, for the we'll, trial. We'll have this real we'll quick. We'll have AJ Styles <laughs> and hey, look, Finn Balor. Can you imagine quick. to tell them that? I need we need y'all to do something at the end of the match. <laughs> that's why they flew him out there. We this, need this for the, the trial, I, and that's who. Do this too, sweet. Yeah, do it. It's ours. Because because the club because the club. Oh my god, they stopped. Remember they stopped calling them that. Gallows and Anderson still do it, 
but we don't pay that much attention to them. And they don't really do it to each other a whole lot. They just sort of flash the sign. It's a flash real like. quick. But when you had, they gave them extra three minutes in the ring to make sure they held it yeah. for the hard cam they, photo. They freeze fame high fived it. They freeze it. Hold it. Hold, Hold it. it. Twitter. Twitter. Wait, Instagram. let's get room tone. Hold it. Room, room tone. tone. Room, room tone. tone. <laughs> Quiet for tone. <laughs> Clink. Get out the ring. <laughs> so yeah. true. It's so true. And also, you know, excited to see Scorpio Sky. Um, once again, he's going to be on Ring of Honor television, which is so cool. Nice. Um, don't know what the situation is with him, but uh, if there's anyone that can, you know, really help the roster following all the people that departed, you know, that's the thing. Ring of Honor, man, they just keep chugging along and, mm-hmm. and it's it's always you know it's always good stuff so uh you and dale sat down with the villain himself yes indeed marty Skrull. yeah so it was a, it was exciting to talk to him it was at uh death before dishonor and um you know being the villain nice guy give us some good time he's a smart smart guy sure like he is very savvy very aware i think you'll hear a lot of that in this interview and uh it's for you know it's not the longest career at this point but damn he is in a good spot, and he's a smart guy and really owning it. He has done quite a bit. So enjoy the interview. Dale Rutledge, Scott Narver with Marty Skrull. We are here, Las Vegas, Ring of Honor, Death Before Dishonor. Marty Skrull, how's it going? I'm pretty good. Tell me, Skrull? Absolutely Every British not. Friend, I say. <laughs> if you say Skrull, I will walk they out this interview the right now. <laughs> the I- U be- uh, comes before the R. I see that. Making an L sound. So, so it's S C in front of it. It's skull. Sk- but that's it. Rhymes of girl. Skull. Did I say old. girl? <laughs> you can say girl. It's skull. I Not scroll is just wrong. I say lady. Girl, curl, well, skull. The problem is it's always word of mouth first. So you always hear like, oh, did you hear about Marty Scroll? You hear about Marty Scroll? Those and then people you see suck. It, you go, no, it's not. But that's not how it's said. No, it's, it's not difficult when you no. read it. I just felt like we needed to clarify because I've heard it so many I different can ways. Confirm it is Marty Skull. <laughs> Thank you. I think you're a good source on it. <laughs> uh, so tell me about Ring of Honor. You've been here about a year now, right? Uh, when was did it, I start? It was like Augustish. I no, want to say November last year. Oh, was it November? Yeah. Was that the UK tour when they? Yeah, I started on the UK tour. Yeah. yeah. No, you're, it's been great. Um, what I really like about Ring of Honor is how the company is built around you know the in-ring product and obviously there's a lot of glitz and glamour there as well but it's pretty you know it's pretty much based on what happens in the ring you know so for me as a a craftsman and a performer i love coming here and and, you know telling my stories in the ring and um, so far it's been great it's such a good time being here watching the company grow Mm -hmm. feeling that i'm a part of that i'm you know uh contributing to this company growing um so no i've been having an absolute bull here i've been having a great time now you and uh, will osprey kind of came at the same time did you guys know the other was signing or did mm-hmm. it just happen happenstance i think they kind of approached us at similar times okay yeah obviously i've made much more of an impact than osprey has at ring of honor but uh, i mean <laughs> you know i'm actually, got, just I'm about actually a wrestler with a bit of depth so uh <laughs> you know I'm, i've made much more of a splash than will osprey has in ring of honor take that uh, aerial assassin oh well, you know it's, it's not it's not as shot by him it's just the truth can't say much more can i you know once you get past all the you know amazing wrestler don't get me wrong but once you get past that's kind of like ah eh, you know what's left you know <laughs> That's why he's taking it to Australia. Hey, that's why he's got new yeah, people he's to- moving to Australia. So <laughs> like, more power to him. Hey, you guys, you haven't seen me yet. Hey, look, I do stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've been here twice. But, you know, I've been here. I've been, you know, he was a champion, but TV champ for a day or two, and then I beat him. And, and then you I, took it. Yeah. yeah, and then I've been making headlines and ring of honor ever since. So, yeah. I mean, this you is can- my, you know, this is for sure. I'm the, I'm the number one Brit in this company without doubt. <laughs> well, sure. Did you feel bad enough to maybe just send him a villain club shirt? He can have a villain club shirt if he wants. He it doesn't have to be me. the right size. No, I mean, just send him. Yeah, I can send him one. You know, he can do what he wants to it. You know, <laughs> he he's not sending any t-shirts, so he might as well have one of me. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the villain because I mean, it's even the villain as a as a concept is not terribly old itself, really. I mean, what, not, what kind no, of made would not you... capitalize on it in in the simplified way that you have? I feel. How do you mean? Uh, just you know, just simply the villain. Yeah, like that, there are so many things that have been used, or so many nicknames, and yeah, uh, it's it's underutilized, which you just pounced right on. Well, you know, I think you just got to label stuff what it is. What is he? 
he's a villain. I always thought my best way to stand out and uh, you know above anyone else was just uh, just to be different and do something different. And I always really liked playing an over the top villain and just being a guy that actually went out there and acted like a bad guy or like a villain. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah. Oh. We'll just be the villain. There we go. <laughs> and it's helped because obviously, especially companies like Ring of Honor or New Japan or even PWG, the action's so fast and furious and there's so many guys. You know, guys like Will Ospreay, you know, I was just burying him a minute ago, but he's, he's so impressive in the ring. Um, and I think, okay, how can I stand out? Shall I try and, you know, they're doing 630 splashes, right? Shall I try and do a... 920 splash or maybe i can just be a character and be remembered and everything else so that's my approach to wrestling just trying to be different i come i mean the fact that i'm british i play to that my strength in america anyway because you know the way i talk people here they're not too familiar with if i say a funny word i call someone an umpty like oh that's that's hilarious but that's just me being me you know so uh <laughs> you know that's just my last right, name that's, that's how just, you say it yeah all right <laughs> It's not funny. <laughs> so even, even that, they're confused by my real name. So uh, <laughs> Villainous. No, yeah. So I've had a really good time uh, playing with uh, the Monica and kind of getting behind that role. But again, it's not, it's not so much a role as in it's just kind of me being comfortable in who I am and going out there and, and just, just, just that being me and getting hated for being me. Uh, yeah. Which is a perfect fit for the Bullet Club, I feel. Did, did you kind of expect that would be your trajectory when you came to Ring of Honor, Not that you would head I that way? I came to Ring of Honor, but, um, I mean, I'm really close friends with, with uh, uh, the Young Bucks. I'd be hanging out with them a lot and, you know, really good friends with Cody. And I think it, it, it seemed like a natural fit. And the reason why I think we got on so well is that we, we really share the same passion for, for wrestling and we have the same kind of mindset. We want to... We want to make wrestling fun. We want to push the boundaries. We want to build this company. We're not just happily doing a ring of on a pay-per-view and just having loads of good matches because every wrestling promotion in the world has matches. Like when I joined Bullet Club, they were just happy it just being like, oh, you could just maybe do a tweet saying you're joining. And we were like, no, we want to make this a big deal. Like we, we, the whole thing when I joined, we come up with that. We made Bullet Club the number one um, worldwide trend. So... And in, my, in our heads, all of us, that's exactly what we want to do every pay-per-view. We want people talking. We want to push the boundaries, you know. We want to do all this kind of crazy stuff. So I feel like that's why we get along so well. We kind of, we all have the mindset. We're not just happy just being good performers. We want to actually, like, change the business and, and do different things and, 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 and shock our audiences. And just to captivate people as well and exhilarate that's exactly what we're here for and i think we all have that shared mindset so it was a natural fit for me to, to join them in the bullet club it certainly was a great reveal i would definitely say and yeah. now you have pretty much merchandised every single thing i love the uh, the villain all stars yeah i saw a what lot is of, that like the, the shoes oh yeah <laughs> yeah sorry the converse yeah the converse yeah they're badass man they're so cool well, that's probably like did they give you a pair uh yes but i haven't got them yet Oh, no, your fans has, have already got some. I saw some on Twitter. Him. I'll go to Chicago next month, so maybe I'll get some then. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that's one of my probably one of my a big accomplishments was the fact that I managed to come up with a wrestling gimmick that could market umbrellas. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool. If I could sell one thing, it's umbrellas. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen a lot of that before in wrestling. Right, exactly. Willow tried. Willow <laughs> tried. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a cool thing. Seeing how. The demand for people wanting my umbrella was pretty yeah. cool because it's such a weird, you know, different object for wrestling. So, yeah. have you seen that umbrella that closes the opposite way now? I uh, I got tagged in many videos of it. Yeah, <laughs> we might. I actually think we're coming out with a new umbrella. I don't want to reveal too much, but there will be a different style of umbrella coming out soon. Uh -huh. So it's kind of exciting. But nice. Yeah, obviously with the merchandise, that's, that's a big thing. Like, I've been very fortunate with uh, the Hot Topic deal. Um, you know, so if any fans of mine are listening, like. I generally really do appreciate it when people, you know, go out and buy a shirt and everything else. Like I just, last week, I, I just brought my first home back in England. And a big part of that is, you know, the contribution of the, the fans supporting me and buying the shirts and the, the all-stars of the Converse and everything else. So it's been really cool. And that's always been a, a bit of a big passion of mine as well, is trying to create cool merchandise and trying to create cool T-shirts. Um, a lot of times, if I'm ever wearing, you know, my own stuff, like right now, wearing my villain hat, when I'm back at home, a lot of my 
friends or people that I know that aren't familiar with wrestling, certainly not fans, they're like, oh, that hat's really cool. Where'd you get that from? I want it. And so uh, I think that's kind of cool, the fact that I can make stuff to appeal to people that aren't even wrestling fans. So in my head, I'm like, well, people who don't surf, you know, will wear Quicksilver. Or people that don't like MMA will wear Tap Out. So maybe I could be the guy who can make non-wrestling fans wear my wrestling stuff. So that's my mindset. And I think everybody likes to be a little bit of a villain. So I, 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 think, I think everyone is, yeah. yeah. Everyone's just a... Don't sugarcoat it. Everyone's an arsehole. <laughs> I'm just the guy that admits it, but unfortunately, arsehole and a hat wouldn't sell very well, so uh, <laughs> we put vinyl on there. <laughs> Do you get to go home very much? Uh, it varies. I kind of took two weeks off last few weeks because um, uh, I've been buying a house, but I ended up resting a few times anyway and I had a little trip to Paris, but October, I'm home. I'm legit home four days of the whole month. In the in the new place, uh, well, I haven't moved into it yet. I wow! Mean, I, yeah. Well, congrats. That's cool. Thank yeah. you. I've moved into it. It's just you know, I put an offer in. They agreed. Um, but yeah, I'm only home. Like I'm back. I, I've got, I rent an apartment at the moment. Right. I'm only back. Yeah. Total total of four days in October. Not much more in November either. Like Jeez. maybe six seven days at home. So pretty brutal. Yeah. But you know, well, it's, like, it's not brutal. It's you know, I love to do this. I'm very very grateful. I'm fortunate to do so. Yeah, and you're doing stuff that you love, so love it, bro. Can't be love can't it. be too bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's the it's you know you're getting to do the work, you're seeing the success, but you know the time to unwind and being at home. But I get bored. I go home for a few days. I'm like, oh, I'm bored now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what can I do? So, I think I'm British, so I'm just gonna moan either way. <laughs> you know? Oh God, I've got no time at home. Oh, I'm at home. I'm bored. You can't win. I'm just a horrible human being. Hence the villain again. <laughs> so no, no movies, no games. Like, what's the? Yeah, I mean, uh, oh, am I going to start doing any movies? <laughs> sure, but uh, is that? Hey, is there's that talks of you... it being the elite movie. Yeah. Oh boy, that's kind of uh, a spoiler right there. I might just drop that. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've been thinking about a movie actually. Maybe. Mm. I think a good crossover with the Kingsman. You know? Oh yeah, it's, I get. Ta- I actually haven't seen it. I get tagged in a lot of stuff. For the oh Kingsman. yeah, yeah. I, do you know what? Like, actually filming the the other day, uh, being the elite the other month with uh, the young bucks, and we did a scene. And Matt Jackson actually turned around to me and was like, "Hey, our acting's got better." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "I was like, dude, our acting's so bad. Come on, like, it's <laughs> terrible." So I think I might be a long way off doing movies. Yeah. <laughs> Are, but being the elite movie, that's fine. Sure. <laughs> uh, was there ever any specific movie villain that inspired you or that brought yeah, this out? Yeah, I, uh, I actually like, um, not necessarily villains. I really took a lot of inspiration from uh, Jim Carrey and The Mask, actually. Really? I really like that yeah. quirky gimmick. Like, uh-huh. Even if I don't play off so much, I just originally I kind of envisioned myself like that, you know? It's kind of how I wanted to be. Kind of slick, but still a bit of a badass. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then... Uh, so kind of like that. Then I was kind of keen on uh, Alex from Clockwork Orange. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of his verbiage and the way he kind of walks and talks and he stares. I quite liked a lot. And just other films. Uh, there's a film, Talent, The Talented Mr. Ripley. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Yeah, They're Matt Damon. Psychotic. Yeah, Matt Damon. Yeah. And, uh, so those kind of characters I, I really liked. I took a lot of inspiration from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I guess Steve Ledger's Joker obviously is an obvious one. Yeah. Um, you know th- those sort of roles. I probably took more inspiration of the character than, than from movies than anything else. I mean, I see a lot of live shows as well, like theatre and stuff, and I always watching the villain. Even if it's like a few weeks ago, I went and saw The Lion King, and I'm like just trying to study Scar the way he talks and the way he walks. And he said something great in it, like when he said about how when he was a kid, nobody loved him. He had no friends, and I was like, yeah. I think the villain's like that as well. I think that's my case. That's why I'm such a piece of work now you know? <laughs> so yeah i get inspiration from the lion king there we go <laughs> who knew wouldn't have guessed that there we go <laughs> um where, where did you see it at was it on broadway or was oh that... yeah well in uh, london yeah in london okay yeah, cool, yeah, cool, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, end. Uh, is that home for you are you in london proper or are you in sort of the... no i'm from a place called cambridge it's about an hour or two north of london cambridge, it's kind of close cambridge. to london yeah uh but at, at the moment i, I live uh, in a place called portsmouth uh, a couple of hours south of london but it's all near london yeah yeah cool. so kind of flying back and forth at the moment i might relocate here eventually 
I still haven't worked out. But and are, yeah. are you still doing matches at Progress and, and things like that? Or Not Progress. I just did uh, my last match at Progress the other week, actually. We did oh, Alexandra nice. Palace, yeah. I had wrestled with him for quite a while. And then I did like a surprise comeback the other night, kind of like for one night only. So because you were there, like it progress the yeah, first one, the weren't first you? Show, yeah, yeah. It was the champ, two-time champion. Yeah, I did a lot of work with those guys, a lot of shows. Uh, was that kind know, of bittersweet? To I mean, it's 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 good because it's like it's nice to to go on and do different things. Right. I mean, it's not like I could never do a progress show ever again. But at of the same course. time, like I don't want to be doing the same stuff there all the time. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to, um, y- you know, you've only got a certain window of a lot of places and stuff and. You know, I'd won the, t- the title a few times. I wrestled there probably more than anyone. What's left to do? Do you know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. It, 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 unless you change up completely. Um, so it's fine, you know. It, it's I can, you know, still friendly to, with, with the guys and stuff, and I can, you know, watch from afar. I might wrestle there again, who knows? But they're doing really great things. And the show I did the other day was awesome. The reaction I got was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he, uh, even... Being at one, I mean, would you have ever guessed that they would be headed to Wembley next year for... Uh, yeah, not from the start. Like, it's it's crazy, the growth of UK wrestling. It's just, they've done... Progress has done a really good job of just um, bringing those fans together and making, like, making a place for those fans just to, just to come together and feel like they're a part of something. And yeah. They know every month they can meet up with their friends from around the country and have a good time together so i think for a lot of the fans there it's more about the experience than it is um even the wrestling you know uh, i think that's a big part for them so they've done a really good job of uh, of marketing i don't know if like like for example a lot of the progress fans call themselves the progress ultras uh, i don't know if progress come up with that or the fans did but it's certainly they've done a really good you know every really good what's the word i'm looking for well, just a really good job, really, of just sort of... A community? Yeah, making like a community almost, around, built around the promotion. So, you yeah. know, well done to them. They do have that everyone welcome moniker, yeah. and I, mm-hmm. I, I think that is that is not just a slogan. I, th- I feel yeah. like that is the vibe in that. Absolutely. Because yeah. we've both been to a show at different times. Definitely, yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, it was that. It was, you know, come in. This is a great show, and the fans being so rabid that it's like, no, we want something here of our own. Sure. Yeah, Jim is walking around, you know, doing things. Uh, so, how? What's the vibe for ROH then? Is there? Have you found a, a similar kind of thing for the fans here, or or the crowd in general? I I think Ring of Honor fans actually my favorite. Really? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Just because, like, I think it helps. Um, a lot of times in independent wrestling, like I feel like it's really cool because you know it's it's really close with the fans and everything, but. I think after a while, they can, almost fans get a bit familiar and a bit spoiled after a while, you know. Like, for sure, oh, seen it, for but sure. Because like, Ring of Honor, it, taught, it goes all over the country, and, and the fans, a lot of the fans, they see us on TV first, and when they come to the live shows, it's like, oh, the guys, they are stars, and they're really excited to see us. Uh, and that's the way it's set up. Like, the fans aren't trying to... The focus is on the in-ring product, kind of like I spoke earlier. They're not, the fans aren't trying to make themselves a big part of the show. They're not trying to get themselves over. They're just they're here to be entertained so i i actually think ring of honor fans are my favorite and well and new japan fans um, in japan as well uh, but in terms of like it, you know america and the uk i think i think ring of honor fan yeah i think they're my favorite actually that's cool sure. yeah. what was your you did the super juniors didn't you yeah how what yeah. was that like it was awesome man i loved it i loved everything about japan it's funny um Cabana was texting me and I was out there. He said, "Oh, do you, how do you find it?" I was like, "I love it." He's like, "Great." He's like, "I loved it too." Because some people, some people hate it, and I hate them. <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> it's just such a cool play. I just loved everything about it. It's just so it's like very different. Just yeah. a well-oiled machine. Like it's just so, you know, just the country I love. The, the working for the company I love. Just so professional. It was really well looked after. Yeah, I can say, you know, I'm really excited to go back there at some point. It was just a real great time loved every minute yeah. that's awesome how does that work for you do they just kind of let you know when they have an idea for you or something or yeah they just say hey do you want to come here and I go sure <laughs> not much sounds to so it. technical no, not much to complicated it complicated this much whole process <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome it's been great to see your trajectory just get better and better Thank and better you. and I'm trying, it's, uh, as a fan I've, I've loved watching all your matches Thank and you. seeing you just go crazy I'm trying, man. <laughs> I'm well, trying to yeah. do something different, mate. But no, thanks very much for having me. Uh, I've got this big match tonight, so I probably I'm still like half asleep because I'm jet lagged and. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. Best snap out of that, right? Oh, and then uh, you know, I went out with Cody last night just to check out the uh, not out out, but you know, I went and checked <laughs> you out. Can't Vegas. not go to the strip, right? Yeah. And so now I'm a bit like, ugh. So I need a 
I just drank that coffee in me. It was like it's done nothing to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll do some push-ups, wake myself up. But no, I'm excited for tonight. Go play some fun. slot machines. You know, get the oh, adrenaline yeah, going. Oh, give me guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need more of. There push-ups. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we actually need to do. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Well, thanks so much. Guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Fantastic interview, Scotty. Marty Skrull is... Uh, he doesn't seem like that much of a villain. Yeah. It's... Well, unless you say Skrull. Right. Or say his name wrong, because it's Skrull. Sure. So, it's, it's a very, very particular. It, as I would be, too. If I had the umbrella, I'd want people to say my name correctly as well. Yeah. You don't want Loquesto. I hear it all the time. Really? Oh, God. So, I, I, almost all the time, people say my name wrong. Yeah. Have you thought about changing it to Johnny La Nachos? Because people love nachos. That would I, sound so dope. I do love nachos. What's up, Johnny La Nachos? Mm. You would get a Comedy Central special, special so immediately. Quick. Johnny Lanachos. Oh, man. Coming to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Johnny Lanachos. And I split my last name into two words L A, Nachos. nachos. Mm-hmm. And they would think you related to some black girl named Lanachos. And as a black See, man, I was thinking, say that. I was thinking that Lanachos, wouldn't that be more of a. No. Okay. No, you'd be a black girl. All and, right. And just a party guy in general. Yes. And then we talk yeah. about working at Chili's. And I'm all the that. kind of guy that shows up to the party. Guess what I brought? <laughs> Lanachos brought nachos. <laughs> mm hmm. And they're gluten-free chips, y'all. Well, you, you just killed healthy. it, and yeah. you just burned everything Sorry. you had. You had a you good ha- thing. You had it. Jim Gaffigan has it. covered all of the food but you nachos. Had you had it. You had one job. Mm-hmm. One job. One and job. you could have been the greatest wrestling manager, Johnny Lanachos. You had the. You had one job, and you just blew it in less than 30 seconds. Walking around ringside, holding out a nacho plate, people grabbing you nachos. Here's this goal Scotty Narvey is giving you, and you just blew it. My finisher's called the seven-layer dip. Shut up. No one cares anymore. <laughs> oh, right. You've already said gluten-free. I'm still you trying. Killed- <laughs> Come on, man. Kansas City doesn't understand. Uh... We are at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. Follow Dale Rutledge at The Walking Dale. Scotty Narvigo. Uh, you want to check out YouTube.com slash On Your Mark Show. There's been some extra tidbits from some previous interviews from Matt Morgan, uh, from Sin Bodie, and other good stuff coming up. I know there's a Halloween video coming up, but all sorts of good stuff, so check that out. And also, Dave Made Maze is available on video on demand and in theaters across the globe. So go to DaveMadeMaze.com to check it out. And you can follow me on social media at Scott Narver. All right, J.E. Washington. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Jay Washington. How are you doing? Good, thank you. I'm Steven Seagal. Oh, all right, I like your ponytail. Mm. It doesn't look like it's real, but you managed to make it happen. By the way, Steven I'm, I'm going to go ride on a horse with Vladimir what Putin. What ethnicity are you? I don't know. Because you look Italian, half Native American. You sound like you're you're possibly British, even though you sound like a douchebag. Well, lately I've just been really bloated. You look like you're giving birth to all of the animal kingdom. There's a lot of sodium in my diet. Nothing but sodium. Like, all of your pores just are filled with salt. I'm anyway, Jabba the Hutt's cousin is what I am. <laughs> you look like Pizza the Hutt, actually. <laughs> I love trail mix. <laughs> you like all, but your trail mix is nothing but blocks of cheese and full packages of crackers. Find me on Facebook. What other kind of trail mix is there? Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> A whole peanut tree. Find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Mr. J. Washington. M-R-J-A-Y-W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. Check out the Trusty Psychic Podcast with myself and Bobby Hill. We get you caught up on everything in the Marvel and DC TV shows and live action cinematic universes uh check out my website jwashington.com also um yeah you can i just was in a music video with uh open mike eagle called no selling it just came out it's on youtube check that oh, out i like I'm, that title of a name yeah, yeah it's called no selling i'm back okay. in the wrestling ring so i put on my trauma gear and i look actually even though I, I got a little you know some little pledge i'm been down it's like oh this looks way better than when i used to wear it really i can live nice. with it way better like okay. way better but nonetheless i'm now finna buy some new wrestling gear so don't Judge me. I'm probably just going to try to get in the ring. But that's it. I'm putting myself over and I'm done. Fair enough. Um, if you yes. follow this Queen Bee, everybody, call him out on yeah. it. Yeah. Check it yes, out. Yes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Buffalo real soon. Um, at J Quasto, QuastoAlbum.com. Pick up my new comedy album. It made the Billboard Top 10. Very, very proud of it. I guarantee you will enjoy yourself. Also, Championship Wrestling from Arizona, like I already mentioned, this Saturday, Empire Event Center in Phoenix. And Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, next taping would be Sunday, November 12th. But we are on the CW on 110 affiliates across the country. So no matter where you live, check your local listings on the CW, Saturday mornings, 7 a.m., and you might be able to watch us on television, which is super cool. Other than that, uh, jlocomedy.com for comedy dates. I'm going to be in Detroit uh, November 9 to 11 with my buddy Craig Shoemaker. And that's all I can the remember. The Love Master. That's right, the Love Master, baby. So y'all oh, have a great... Speaking of which, Dale. 
The Love Master? Yeah. Of course. Dale Rutledge. Follow him at The Walking Dale once again. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for listening. We love you. We'll see you next week. Keep chasing your dreams.